Hi, boys and girls. So we are continuing with module 14. Today is lesson two, and I've been having some computer issues, so hopefully it's going to work. Um, lesson two involves composing three-dimensional shapes, and so let's talk about what that means. I can combine three-dimensional shapes to make a new shape. So they're showing us this really cool picture of a city and they want you to think about this city and notice if you see any of the shapes in that city that we talked about yesterday, any of the three-dimensional shapes that we talked about, what shapes do you see? Now, if you would like to try to draw them in the box, you can do that, or you could just write the words. So I'm noticing that when I look at this building right here, I'm noticing that it has a circle on the top, a circle, I'm guessing, on the ground, right? and that it goes straight up like this with curved surfaces all around. So if you remember from yesterday, that building, this building right here is a cylinder. Most buildings, if you think about them, have a rectangle across the top, a rectangle down the, the side, on the front, on the back, six rectangles. And so that would mean that they are mostly rectangular prisms. Most buildings are rectangular prisms. So look through that picture and maybe you're noticing some shapes that I don't see. I don't see any cubes, um, but you can also see some of the 2D shapes that are along the sides, like the windows, of course, are actually rectangles, not rectangular prisms. So just write some of those names down there or draw a city of your own if you would like to. That would have been the challenge. If we would have been in school today, we would have been building a city. So maybe you wanna build a city and take a picture of it and send it to me. If you have blocks or cereal boxes or um, oatmeal containers, build a city today. And um, that would be really fun to send me a picture. So let's look at the next part of the lesson. Build understanding. Sky wants to combine these shapes. So I have these shapes in front of me and I wish you did too, but I know that you don't. I have these three shapes. And if we look across the top, we have a cone, a cylinder, and a cube. Build and describe a way to combine these shapes. So what they're wanting you to think about is, could you put the cone on the bottom if you were building? Would this work very well if I put this down on the table? Nope, this would, right? Or this would, that would work. So draw a little sketch of something that you could build if you used those three shapes build and describe so you can label them. We know how to label in our writing um, the names of them as you build that. Then number two, Alex uses cubes to make a rectangular prism. Now, unfortunately, I don't have two cubes that are exactly the same size. Um, so you're gonna have to pretend a little bit with me today. So think about if these two were the same size and I put them together. So if this were cut off the top here, if I put two cubes together, they would make a rectangular prism. So you can draw those as best you can. And three-dimensional shapes are not easy to draw. So do your best and draw those together. How many cubes would you use? You could use two of them. Um, so it says he uses it to make a rectangular prism that looks like a tens block. So Actually, I do have some cubes that are all the same size. If I put 10 of these little cubes together, and we, did, we talked about this yesterday a little bit, this is a rectangular prism. So this is, um, and number two, Alex uses cubes to make a rectangular prism that looks like a tens block. There we go. Build and describe the combined shape. So Alex would use how many cubes are in this rectangular prism. There are 10. I have to read the directions carefully. I missed that for a second. All right, let's keep going. Step it out. Ted has three-dimensional shapes. How can he make combined shapes? So in A, use the shapes. So you're going to have to use your imagination a little bit because I know you don't have these at home. 
but you do have the, t the little green cubes. So you could um, build a little tower if you want to. If he used two cubes, he could make a rectangular prism. If he used a cone and a cylinder, he could make that shape. Use shapes, circle, other combined shapes that you can make. So in this question, this is what they're asking you. Which of these are a combined shape? So actually, this one is not a combined shape. It is just a cylinder. So you would be circling. That is a combined shape. It has two shapes together. That is a combined shape. It has two shapes together. And then if we look at the bottom, Mona combines these shapes. Circle a combined shape that she can make. All right, so let's talk about that. If she has these two shapes in front of her, can she make that one? Nope. Could she make this one? Yes, that has the two rectangular prisms that look just like the ones she has. This one has a rectangular prism and a cube, so she couldn't make that one. This one has four cubes together, so she couldn't make that one either. Moving on. On your own, I'm going to guide you through this a little bit. Circle the shapes below that you can combine to make this shape. So I'm not going to do this page with you, but if you look carefully at this shape, which of these blocks would you have to use to make that? And then in number three, Donna combines some of these shapes, circle the shape below that she can make. If these are the blocks that she has, can she make this or can she make this? You have to look carefully. They're a little bit tricky because there are some shapes behind. In number four, how can Bo combine different shapes to make this shape? So on these lines, you need to tell me how many rectangular prisms he would need, how many cylinders he would need, how many cubes. And remember, if you don't know how to spell the word cylinder, which I don't expect you to be able to do, you need to be, remember to look back in your book and find it. We know where to find these. We talk a lot in first grade about using the room. So you're not just sounding these words out because you know that they're part of this chapter so you can find them. What helps me stay on task? So think about that. Maybe talk to someone. You don't have to answer these learning mindset ones in writing, but I do like when you talk to someone about that. So maybe you just really think that building a city is cool. So today I um, told your parents that we we're going to move pretty quickly through this last little math book because we only have two weeks of work left and we did get a late start in into math because we didn't get the materials until the beginning of October plus then we have all this remote learning time so um, we're a little bit behind where we should be at the end of the year so we're going to go pretty quickly and I will I am sure that Mrs. Taylor and Mrs. Hannah will be understanding next year um, and they will absolutely review all of these things. But I also think that you guys can do it. So we're going to do a lot of math over the next two weeks. Um, so this is lesson three. So you're actually doing lesson two and lesson three today, which is Tuesday, May the 5th. So this lesson three says make new three-dimensional shapes. So our I can statement is I can make new three-dimensional shapes by putting together combined shapes. So spark your learning. They want you to design a bridge. So look at the picture of that bridge. What shapes can you combine and then repeat to make a bridge? You can make, again, if you have some blocks at home or you have some boxes, you can make some sort of a bridge on your own draw a bridge here that you think would be cool. If you were an architect and you could design a bridge, what would it look like? So do a, have some fun with that one, using some geometry and some shapes. Building understanding. Lang makes a shape using two rectangular prisms. All right, I've got two rectangular prisms. Again, I wish they were exactly the same size, but they're not. Um, build and describe a way to combine the shapes. So there are more than one way, right? You could do them this way. You could do them this way. You could just lay them on top of each other. So there are lots of different things that you could do. You pick two rectangular prisms in part A. Part B, build the same shape again, then combine both shapes. Show and describe the shape. Okay, so that would mean if I did build them like an L, 
I would have two L's beside each other or two L's on top of each other. So since I used two cubes at the top here, if I'm combining those two cubes with a repetition, I'm going to have four cubes in part B. All right, step it out. Choi makes this combined shape. So this is kind of what I was talking about, but this one has a cube and a rectangular prism. He makes the same shape again. How can he put together his combined shape to make a new shape? Use the combined shape to make a new shape. So here's the first one and there's the second one. He puts them together. They're kind of behind each other, or he could put them on top of each other turn opposite directions and do this. So he could do this one or this one. Circle another shape that he could make using the combined shape. So if you look really carefully at these, does this one have this design in it? It doesn't. They're end to end, so it wouldn't be that one. Could it be this one? Does this one have two pieces that look like these? It does. That third shape just has um, one rectangular prism and three cubes. So that would not work as a repetition of those either. And at the bottom, Quinn makes the shape on the right again and combines both shapes, circle the new shape. So here is the shape that Quinn is starting with. If she repeats that same shape again, which one could she have? So it wouldn't be this one. This is exactly what she started with. It wouldn't be this one. This doesn't even have the yellow cubes on it. It wouldn't be this one because the cubes have to be on top of the rectangular prism. So it would have to be this one. On your own, use repeated reasoning. Ava makes two shapes the same, then she combines the shapes, circle the new shape. So I'm gonna let you try that one on, her, on your own. Number three, Brody makes this shape two times and combines both shapes. Is the new shape a cube? Okay, so if he made this and then repeated it, would it be a cube? That one's a little bit tricky. If you have four dice at home, you might wanna actually try that one. How can you make this shape using combined shapes? All right, so to kind of explain, and again, you have to do a little bit of thinking and you might be able to use your little tiny green cubes to try these. You could use your little tiny green cubes to do number three and to try to do number four. See how many cubes there are actually in here because you can't see all of them in that drawing. All right, so I challenge you to try that. And we are not going to do the review pages. I'm not going to assign them. We're actually going to move on on Wednesday to two dimensional shapes, but obviously if you love math, go for it. Have a fabulous day.